Hey everybody, David Barnes here with another episode of ET Info, where I bring you information on emerging technologies from IBM. This video is the second in a two-part series that I got an opportunity to leave my hovel of green screenness here, my cave as I call it, and I got to go out on the road for the first time and videotape a discussion between Rod Smith, IBM Vice President of Emerging Technologies, my boss, in the video, The Man in Black, and Stephen O'Grady, an analyst from Redmonk. And Rod and Stephen talked about uh, Big Sheets, one of our projects. They talked about Hadoop. They talk about um, big data. And in this video, it is specifically business-oriented. Still some technical stuff, but more business-oriented. I'll tell you at the end of this how to get to the other video, which I made a little more technical-oriented, technically-oriented. And I better just be quiet at this point and let them do the talking. So Stephen, You've been thinking about and working with Hadoop kind of at the technology level, mm -hmm. but you've been also talking to the customers and listening to their business problems. Sure. Um, can you give us kind of your insights, what you've been learning and the types of things that uh, uh, your, your customers have been you know, asking about? Sure. Um, you know, I think we can, we can look at it from on a high level and then in, you know, with some specific examples. And I think from a high level, you know, really what we see are um, you know, customers throwing Hadoop at problems that involve obviously large amounts of data, um, but also typically large amounts of data that are not structured, you know, and they don't necessarily want to maintain, you know, in the same fashion, you know, that they would, mm -hmm. you know, traditional data warehouse or data mart. Um, you know, there are a lot of, it, it's, there are a lot of different types of data just depending on the industry, right? It's, it's really highly dependent on vertical. Um, you know, examples that we see, you know, we've, Twitter's come up, um, we've talked about that, and, you know, I think you know, Twitter itself certainly is, is going this direction, but also um, there are a variety of third parties that are collecting data, mm -hmm. um, and essentially siphoning data out of Twitter and running uh, right, Hadoop-style yes. analytics on that mm -hmm. to do sentiment analysis, mm -hmm. right? Um, are people positive? Are people negative? What are they positive on? What are they negative on? Um, how are things trending over time? You know, these are all questions that people are beginning to ask, um, you know, of this data, and they can do that, you know, efficiently, you know, with a platform like Hadoop. Um, you know, sort of in a more concrete business sense, right? You know, we see uh, the technology deployed in bioinformatics, okay. you know, to, yep. you know, for example, to um, essentially look at gene um, uh, data, you know, for example. You know, any place that there are large, um, you know, sets of data that are, you know, either unstructured or semi-structured, um, you know, it's a good candidate. Do you see that when, as you're talking of kind of small businesses or departments and mm -hmm. those things, yep. do you see them asking a different question than we normally see from data center people? Yeah, I think what we end up seeing is is the more questions people ask, mm -hmm. uh, the more questions they want to ask, <laughs> right? You know, because I think one of the things that happens with data is, is that you have to first think of what you want to know, right? So we have lots and lots of data sets. Um, you know, so, you know, after, you know, having access to some of these technologies, and getting answers back, um, you know, you then are, you know, kind of spurred on to, you know, ask further and further questions. You know, so, um, you know, we've been talking, and I've, I've certainly written up in the past. Um, there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of intelligence that can be extracted from even data sources that are considered meaningless. You know, so things <laughs> like Twitter, things mm -hmm, like Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can begin to ask interesting questions. Um, you know, are brands trending up and down? Are people popular or are they not? Um, you know, what areas of the country are more popular? All these, you know, different questions um, are answerable, but you have to know first, you know, where and when you can ask them and how mm -hmm. to ask them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, certainly even at the smallest of businesses, the more people ask questions, I think the more questions they want to ask. So, yeah, as we've talked about, Rod, one of the, the really interesting parts of the dupe world uh, to me was getting the chance to see big sheets mm -hmm. uh, because it, you know really as we've covered one of the you know the, kind of the strength and that the uh, Achilles heel um, of uh, Hadoop at this point is its power but then you, know, you have the fact that it's not that accessible mm -hmm. um, you know to the you know sort of call them the business analyst type person mm -hmm. so being able to layer on to that you know a spreadsheet type interface you know, which, you know, will dramatically expand the audience, you know, really means that you know, we're going to democratize, um, mm. you know, the, the ability to, to analyze, you know, large volumes of data. Um, and it really is interesting to, to kind of ponder, you know, what are we going to find? You know, when we start looking at um, and in, a, analyzing at, you know, some level of depth, you know, these data sets. 
So IBM being IBM, you know, there's always a, a business justification, right? You know, you guys are, are not real big on investing in technology for technology's sake. So when you look at Big Sheets, you know, what do you see, you know, or what do you hear from customers, you know, that makes it so compelling and so interesting? So one of the customers is the British Library. And they have huge amounts of web data that are in archives now. Mm -hmm. And uh, while today they hand classify it, the UK government's <laughs> asked them to be uh -huh. the official web archive for six million domains. Uh -huh. So hundreds of terabytes of information. Now, if that isn't a big enough problem, um, they've also figured out that data isn't always preserved. So every 45 to 75 days, data is changed on those websites. Mm -hmm. And really what the you know UK library would like to do, British Library, is be able to have a corpus of data so you can really understand history. Mm -hmm. So you save those changes and you go back and forth and find out different information about it and really be a you know a living history of of what the government and, and society's been doing. So from here forward, what what do you think this is going to grow into? Well I think we really have pretty good infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? You know, in Hadoop, and, and certainly there's other projects, you know, that are are complementary either to Hadoop directly, um, you know, or in the non-relational space. Um, you know, so going forward, I think what we'll see is is you know more focus on projects like Big Sheets, right? You know, in terms of trying to open up um, some of these technologies to a wider audience. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's it's great, you know, that we have the ability, you know, to ask you know important, meaningful questions of large data sets. Um, you know, but at this point, you know, it's still too difficult um, mm -hmm. for, you know, say, folks in the front office, you know, to ask those questions. You know, so, you know, I think we'll see, you know, more focus on that on those front end tools, whether they're spreadsheet interfaces or visualization, um, you know, projects. You know, we're going to see a lot more uh, focus on on essentially widening the funnel. You know, of people who have access to Hadoop and um, tools like it. So there you have it. I think they summed it up pretty well. As I mentioned previously, this is the second of a two-part series that I created, the first one being a little more technical. If you want to see that or any of the other videos I created, I put them all on youtube.com slash ibmetinfo. And if you want to learn more about Big Sheets, the project from our group that they talked about, you can find the information at our JSTART website, our JSTART landing page, ibm.com slash software slash JSTART. And I will see you next time on ET Info.